Hello and welcome to I Want to Fight Araki, a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Close Analysis Podcast. And today we are sort of continuing our battle tendency discussion. It might be a bit more freeform. We don't know. It's the first time we're doing this. But um, we also have a special guest. Uh, but first, I'm Thomas. And I'm Emily. And uh, why don't you introduce yourself, special guest? <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Giovanna. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we brought her up once before, I think. But yeah, I was, uh, I was so mentioned today, once. Yeah. Today we are not covering any specific episodes of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Instead, we are just kind of taking a moment, taking a breather in between Battle Tendency and Stardust Crusaders because this is kind of a it's kind of a big dividing point in the series. You know, we're I mean we are going to see Hamon again in future, but certainly it won't be a a major, major part of the battles to come. Um, and uh, no more vamp. Well, there is a vampire, but like I wouldn't say like vampires are like the big thing of Stardust Crusaders. Um, I so, still have a list of topics I want to cover in this episode. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I, I, to be honest, I wasn't really sure exactly what this was going to look like, so I didn't <laughs> prepare that much. So. Emily uh, or Giovanna, why don't why don't we jump into something you guys want to talk about? Well, I heard my buddy over here, Giovanna, <laughs> took some notes, and I am so proud. <laughs> <laughs> I took some notes on the last two episodes. That's that's that doesn't well. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I took some the like them don't matter, but I was like, but they do. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I mean, I have other like topics like that I'm interested in discussing, like on the overall series, and like you know. Comparing it to like part one, mm-hmm. the overall, as in you have not seen beyond part. Oh, two. part two and part one, yeah. Okay, so why don't we dive into um, some of those uh, to start with? Who wants to start? I could start. You, you start. start. Okay, I will start. <laughs> so I have. I sort of like most of the stuff. The content that I have here is more like. Le- it's less like symbolism and metaphor based like which is what i usually tend to jump right into not no lack you know not really any big theories tm it's more just like stuff that i liked and stuff that i didn't like about it and i feel like a good topic a good place to start how about let's just like start with the plot overall i feel like that's a good starting point okay about the characters and mm-hmm. more about the plot so basically I feel like compared to the other parts, the plot is very pr- pretty as, as solid as it can be. However, there was one little thing that I was like, ah, this is, you know, weird. But before that, it was like, there were certain vibes, like there's a lot of vibes that I got that were similar to other things that I've seen. Like the Santana episodes had a very like Frankenstein, Rocky Horror vibes. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed thoroughly. Those were like two, like a surprisingly good fight that people don't talk about that much. It's very yeah. fun. Santana very was wacky. like Santana was like low key scary. Oh yeah. Because Tara. like he appears and doesn't like say anything. And yeah. they're like, what do we do? And he's just like not talking and just like starts murdering people. I yeah. think the, those are the most disturbing episodes of oh, yes. this whole part. Except um, for A C D C Yeah, well I, I, you're right for sure. It's 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 close. <laughs> they're disturbing. Like the rib blades are still Ooh, and then he's like, I'm going to go inside Stroheim. <laughs> the Rib Blades, oh. when he, like, pseudo-possesses that, like, one soldier. Oh, yes. Um, that was, that's that pretty was, creepy. That was like, see, this is the thing. If if JoJo was live action, I couldn't watch it. <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> I like, because I'm kind of squeamish. But because it's animated, I'm, like, totally fine with everything I'm seeing. But if it was, like, live action CG or with, like, a bunch of CG effects, I, like, couldn't handle it straight up. If they can make a live action Death Note, there could be a live action JoJo. There is. Yeah. Oh, there is. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, your nightmares there's, came true. There's the, the only one that I know of is a live action movie version of Part Four. Yeah, okay. I think that's the only one. Yeah, and it was made in Japan, and it's not like this weird thing that America was doing. <laughs> yeah. Was, it's like, um, no, it's okay, and we, the live-action JoJo isn't real. It can't hurt you. Live-action JoJo <laughs> exists. 
But yeah, my, um, main, my main point about the plot, the only thing that I was like, well, this could have been improved upon, I think. Well, there's probably several other things, but this is the one that I thought of like 10 minutes before we started this, is that um, they, this, it was the stakes in the plot of part mm-hmm. two, because it seemed as if like the stakes were like said to be high, but they were never actually shown to be high. It's like, yes, Cars is going to take over the world and he hates humans. So it's like, okay, that's fine. But at the same time, they never like explain like how he was going to do it or what he was going to do. And I feel like if they actually explained that, then it would be like a lot more like, okay, this guy has to go down. Cause it just like, it's like a lot of it seems forced because they don't have that explanation. I mean, I, I, I disagree with in that. Like, I do feel like the stakes are raised. Like, Oh, yeah, they're I mean, high, but, like, they could have been higher. <laughs> uh, for sure. I mean, yeah, but, you know, you could sort of say that about any of the parts of JoJo, really, but... Yeah, but, um, yeah, it was just, like, when it came to, like, the big thing that Cars was going to take over the world, and it, like, implied that he might try to kill everybody. It's just, like, yeah, the, the stakes seem high because, like, he's going to try to kill our squad here, but, like, they never, like, we ac- never actually get him, like, being like, yes, I'm go- actually going to kill every human. Like, you would have wanted him to, like, kill off someone? I guess so. I just want, he just wasn't scary enough, honestly, to, like, really see him as much of a threat. He was threatening, but, like, I feel like he could have been more threatening. It's hard, it's hard to describe. I'm trying well, to I mean, that's here. actually, that's actually an interesting point. Um, because I, I definitely feel like part one is more, so, like, I always describe JoJo, all parts of it, as, like, action horror comedy um (laughs) this is correct but like which all sounds like very disparate but i feel like part one definitely like leans more into the horror angle perhaps more than any other part you've got dio with the chimeras and the zombies and you know like like suitable creepy stuff um and part two like sort of gets away from that a little bit more it's I mean, more comedy, it, but it still has quite a bit of horror and action, I would it's say. It's more comedy, but the horror mostly stems from, like, the Santana episode, episodes, rather, and the ACDC fight. Um, it doesn't, it's not really, like, like a baked-in part of the series, I would say. Um, and I, that, that is an interesting sort of transition, because, like, e- like even though Cars is you know, way, way more powerful than uh, part one Dio is, Cars at the End is, um, he's not as scary. And it just, you know, we talked a lot about, like, part two being a subversion of part one, and it, like, makes me wonder if that's almost sort of intentional, that um, it, you know, Cars is less scary or less overtly scary than part one Dio. All fair points. Uh, Yeah, I think, yeah, I agree that, like, part one Dio isn't, like, too scary. I don't know, I don't want to say too scary, because, like, I don't know, the whole vampire. No, part one Dio's funny. Like, I honestly (laughs) think that he's, like, funnier than he is scary. That's, like, like, in the first, (laughs) once again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this again. I've said it a million times. The first three episodes of part one, I love them so much. Like, that, you know, Jonathan's actually kind of interesting, Speedwagon is fun, you know, all, all that good stuff, and then you, you know, Arena is just amazing, and then you've got <laughs> Dio, who is actually, like, kind of interesting for those three episodes, and, like, kind of actually terrifying, because he just, like, reminds me too much of Alex DeLarge from Clockwork Orange. Oh my like, god. Like, once again, <laughs> I, I literally you texted, texted you that. Me, you texted me that at 2 a.m. You said, <laughs> you, like, with no context, at 2 a.m., you just texted me and said, Imagine Clockwork Orange, but instead of Alex, it's just Dio in the movie. And I, 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 I remember responding back the next day. I said it would be the same movie, honestly. <laughs> yeah, crack it hours for me. It would be the same goddamn movie because they're they're um just insane. Their their craziness and unhingedness is very similar because they both just have this thing where it's like, yes, I'm gonna pretend to be a good lad, and then I'm just going to murder people by nightfall. It's. <laughs> Like, that's the same looks like he's energy. actually very intimidating in the first three episodes and very like like you can't let this guy get out into the world or he's gonna murder a bunch of dogs and then like oh. after those episodes he just becomes stupid with all that goodbye jojo and all that <laughs> <laughs> and all the mudas and rees and that's just like bro 
Right. I'm not sure if this was stated. I don't know. I just thought of it now when you mentioned, like, I'm just going to murder dogs because, you know, where's Danny? <laughs> um, <laughs> I just want to think how, like, and there's a part, I forgot which episode, but, like, there's, like, um, there's, like, a dog in the middle of the road, ah, and, yes. like, the, and, and this car's speeding towards it, and then, like, cars, it makes, like, the car Saves crash. Saves the dog. Saves the dog. I'm like, that's actually, like, not, like, a big difference, but it's so notable how, like, Dio's willing to kill dogs and cars is not. My car says, like, some morals, at least. He hates people, not dogs. Yeah. Like, Dio's, like, just, like, I'm gonna fuck everyone up. And then Car's like, I'm gonna fuck all the humans up. But the dogs, they're all right. I believe in dog (laughs) supremacy. It kind of, um... No, I mean, I think that brings up a cool point, actually, because... I mean, you know, like we said, Giovanna hasn't gotten into part three yet, but I think that kind of... I mean, like, you think about, like, Dio is more of, like, uh, like, Cars is, like, he just, like, specifically hates and, like, wants to, like, eat or absorb or whatever humanity, Consent. whereas, like, Dio is just, like, more, like, indiscriminatory when it comes to, like, world domination. It's, like, yeah, like, I'm, you know, everything is gonna be under my control, and, like, that definitely is sort of <laughs> reflected in how his stand works when we get to part three. Who um, would you rather have take over the world, Cars or Dio? Mm. <laughs> oh, I feel like I mean, I, we're, I we're both not... dead in those scenarios, so, yes. you know. But, like, at least, at least nature would go on if Cars was in control. Everything else would be vibing. It'd just be the humans that are, like, messed up. Mm-hmm. But the dogs sure. would be okay. The dogs will matters. be fine, and that's all that matters. <laughs> I'm here for the dogs, okay? Dog supremacy. They are superior <laughs> to humans. Dog shall inherit the earth. Yes. Okay. So. Do we have any other things to talk about about the plot? Because I didn't oh. really have that much. Because like, oh, I may have some. Yo, know, compared to like the plot of part three, it's very good. Yeah, I mean, uh, certainly more involved. I mean, I, I the one thing I will say is like part one gives me big Castlevania vibes. Oh, yes. Oh, um, for sure. Just with, like, the vampire plot and, you know, like, Jonathan, like, recruiting, like, a band of sidekicks. I mean, like, and the other thing is, like, the games, anyway, of Castlevania. Like, not usually complex plots, you know? It's usually pretty straightforward. Dracula's bad guy, Belmont's or Alucard are the good guys. Go kill. <laughs> All right, G of Anna, you said you had some more notes about the plot, perhaps. Yeah, I just want to, like, briefly talk. I know this was, like, mentioned in the last podcast, but I just want to, like, just say my initial reaction to, like, the after the credits. Uh, a little yeah. snippet of part three and how I was basically screaming on the inside. So, so please <laughs> like, my tell heart us your... dropped. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, I, I wrote it down, too. I said... Do not open the chest in all caps. <laughs> and I saw, I think that's the uh, the new JoJo also. I was like, oh my god, very excited. It was like in like a cell for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why. Does, so, has not seen part three in one day soon. You will see part three. <laughs> it all make sense soon. Part one thing I was kind of curious about, Giovanna, because this is, this is the first time you're wa- you've watched battle tendency and like what was your just initial reactions to a lot of it i mean i know we did watch some of it with you but like you're a good for the most test part, what was your reaction to this <laughs> it was, honestly it's like how much i liked it more than part one yeah it was like my initial reaction like i know emily you i think you were there for it this was one like it we started you. yeah and well, you were <laughs> losing your mind we started part two like the first episode it was, like, fucking JoJo comes in, takes out all, like, those, like, bad guys and whatnot for, like, Smokey, and then he goes, oh my god, my grandma's gonna kill me! And I was like, I love, I'm like, best JoJo, favorite, <laughs> we'll recommend again. Like, I loved, I was like, oh my god, I love this guy, this is hilarious. <laughs> so much better than Jonathan, all the way. My grandma's gonna kill me! But then, like, later on, like, Arena is like, go beat that guy's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Arena. I, actually, I liked Arena more, actually, oh, Arena part is two as well. Fantastic. In part one, she was, like, you know, like, kind of, I don't know, existed, I guess. Yeah. She was just, she, like, the love there. interest. Like, literally, like, Dio kisses her at one point, and, like, she didn't want it, but he does it because, 
you know, he doesn't believe in consent. He's a bastard. He's a bastard, yeah. But, like, after she goes, I can't thank you, JoJo. I'm disgraced. And I'm like, that's, no, that's not how that works. It's you just be like, it be like the 1800s, though. <laughs> it be the 1890s, though. Um, and I, so, I, like, I, honestly, Arena's, like, very underrated. Like, she's not there a lot, but when it comes to, like, the female characters in JoJo, she's definitely one of the better ones. Because she's actually, like, she's kind of badass, once again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know, she had to step up, like, after the ending of part one. Like, you know, had, like, two, not one baby, but two babies in a boat by herself in the middle of the ocean. <clears throat> like, I think, like, from there on, she has to, like, you know, step up and be, like, not, like, the helpless victim, but, you know, like, take control. She's tough. She's tough, yeah. Oh, she's, been, like, they talk about how, like, how much she's lost. Like, she's been through, like, so much. It probably was worse that she, like, thought she lost her grandson, too. I love how, like, everything in JoJo's, like, yes, everyone is, like, super buff and physically strong. And then you got Arena, and it's, like, she's still, like, pretty badass, but she's not, like, physically strong. She's just mentally made of steel, and I really love that. (laughs) You know, like, the story of, like, Andrew, President Andrew Jackson? Oh, no. Where, like, when he was, like, 68, some guy tried to assassinate him. Right. Gun jammed, so Andrew Jackson beat the guy's ass with a cane. (laughs) <laughs> like, that's the energy uh, Arena has. Of, like, someone trying to kill her, and then she just beat their ass with a cane. As yeah. a old lady. And that's the same vibe. Or command her grandson to beat his ass for her. <laughs> and, he, and he would do it. Without question. <laughs> Without question. Yes. I love, I love how she was like, be mindful of the guests now. <laughs> One thing that's kind of interesting I, that I just kind of thought of as well is, like, I really feel like family is, like, I mean, like, my, you know, slight spoilers for our Stardust Crusaders dis- discussion, but family is, like, um, is, like, what I think is, like, the big theme of Stardust Crusaders, but certainly, like, we get, like, flirtations of that with part two, um, and in part one, it's, um, sort of the opposite in a way because like you know George dies and then like D- uh Jonathan decides to like kill his family Dio like obviously they're not blood related but you know still like raised together um like the series always refers to them as brothers and it's sort of like anti-family and I feel like throughout this whole series there's like a there's, like, a family, anti-family sort of debate. I mean, we talked about, like, maybe Joseph's, uh, like, you know, growing compassion is, like, a negative, uh, is, like, character development, to be sure, but, like, like a negative outcome of all that. I don't know, just something I thought of. You could also see Dio in part one as, like, a part, like, sort of more solidifying the the importance of family by being like, hey, if you're mean to your family, <laughs> they're not gonna like you very much and they're, they're gonna punch gonna, you with sunlight fists. They're gonna punch <laughs> you with sunlight fists. <laughs> Just like cause obviously like, you know, he's the villain. So it's like not showing any of his, you know, anti family whatever as a good thing at all. Right. I have some other notes here if we don't have anything else to say about the, any of this. Yeah, go for it, Em. Okay, so I have, like, little sections divided about certain characters. Let's let's talk about our boy <laughs> Joseph now. I Joseph, bet we ha- all have. So I remember when I was thinking about this before, and I, I, I kept realizing that he was the only one to actually take down all four of the Pillar Men. And, like, you know, there was other characters that could fight too, but he was the one that took every single one of them down. And I first thought, I was like, well, that's that's sort of like a weakness on the other characters because we didn't get to see them all in the action. But then I realized that I was like, if you think about Jojo as a whole and the fact that he appears in later parts, I feel like it actually adds more weight and impact to when he does appear in later parts. Mm-hmm. So there's Certainly that. raises the, the stakes. It's like, ah, yes, this guy was actually very cool, but now he's just this racist old man (laughs) who got defeated by an escalator in one episode. (laughs) I I literally put in my notes. You don't know the context, but you will love it. I put in my notes, old man Joseph gonna fuck some shit up. Oh, he does. (laughs) 
<laughs> There's been like that one scene of him at the end of uh, part two. He's I can't wait for part two to see him. He's just a racist old man, and he's just so. <laughs> His vibes are different, but like the same at the same. He's a racist old man, but he's our racist old yeah. man. <laughs> like von Stroheim, he may be Nazi, but he's our Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> Hot take: um, Stroheim is like the second best character in part two. Yeah, I like mean, behind God, Joseph. I said this so many times you know, both on the podcast and off the podcast, but, I mean, just, I, I hate, I, I, I hate liking him. Well, not, well, <laughs> yes, I hate liking Von Stroheim, but, um, what I was gonna say was, Joseph, um, is, like, like, part one, like, to be honest, I, I'm probably down on it more than most people. I do think it has its merits, but I just, like if like if I ever go back to JoJo for whatever reason, I'll probably skip part one. Uh, um, yeah. but that and so when Joseph was first introduced, I mean to me, I think that is it's got to be like one of the most perfect character introductions in the whole series. I oh mean, yeah, definitely. I, just it, like literally like after the first scene i was like all right like this guy's awesome <laughs> this is this is so much better than jonathan e okay where's my notes again i lost them <laughs> <laughs> okay it's not, it's not so, an i want to fight arky episode unless emily has to search for her notes <laughs> really it honestly isn't it's just such an essential part of all of maybe this. i should replace emily because i have my notes right now. <laughs> i was prepared Yo, I've been organizing my notes lately, though. I've been taking parts of my notes and then, like, putting them in other parts w under, like, big topics, and I have, like, several pages for each topic. It's getting wild. I have 21 pages of notes as it stands so far. Really? Oh my god. Oh my god. god. Like, bullet? don't- don't come at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I will- I will end you. Who would you say that you want to fight me? Oh, oh. Oh, and, oh, and, oh perhaps. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have another topic that we could go on to if um, only if we're done talking about Joseph. Yeah, uh, I don't know, Giovanna. Did you want to add anything? But Joseph Joestar. Um, every time I think of him, I just think of when um, he's about to meet all the Nazis and he yeah. disguises himself as a woman. And that's what I re <laughs> I refer yeah. to him in my mind as. But, like Jonathan would never do this, but Joseph, oh, he he and would. The yeah. is that he knows it's bad, but he just has no shame whatsoever. He, he just, knows like, it's bad, and confused. he gets offended when yeah. people <laughs> notice. Yeah. He gets offended when people are like, "You're you're an ugly woman." He's like, "Excuse me, I'm gorgeous." <laughs> My favorite part about that, just like as a quick side note, is that the drag costume is like. One of Joseph's alternate costumes in uh, <gasps> the fighting games. Wait, I'm, I'm gonna main that. <laughs> I'm only gonna ever play once. Once we start playing them games, which is gonna happen, <laughs> I'm only going to do that. I, I bet there's people out there who has who have cosplayed as Lady Joseph. Oh yes, oh, like, sure. I believe it. I've seen them. <laughs> I I have all the JoJo memes, as you know. I've seen yes. them. That's a power move. It is such a power move. All right. If we're done talking about Joseph, would, you, would we like to talk about Caesar, perhaps? Um, sure. Oh, uh, Caesar. Oh. So I have, so I have a couple of things. Honestly, like, I cannot take his death seriously <laughs> because the cross rock just murdered the vibe for me. I was like, oh no, Caesar, it's all like, you know, he's just like, I'll give the last of my Haman for you. And I'm like, my boy, he's dying. But then, like, the cross rock, and I was like, okay, I can't. I'm done. <laughs> All the immersion has been, like, completely decimated. The first time I watched it, I was definitely <laughs> uh, emotionally affected. But the second time, like, because, like, I, I had noticed the cross rock before, and I was like, oh, well, that's kind of cheesy, but, you know, whatever. But even um, the first time I watched it, I, like, I was, like, sad. I was like, oh, no. And then, like, I laughed when I saw the cross rock. <laughs> Yeah, watching it the second time for this podcast um, is, it, it just, I don't know, it, it definitely kills the mood, especially because you know it's going to happen. Uh, and it's not just the cross rock as well, because they they pan the camera up, and there's like a lens flare that is also like a cross <laughs> yeah. as well, so. 
It's just like, like how I, I wonder what he's trying to tell us. <laughs> It's like, yes, you know, religious, you know, symbolism is fine. And it, it's like, there's ways to do it where it's like more subtle and just it doesn't hit you. It's not basically, if it's more subtle, it's not as cheesy. And therefore, it's actually kind of interesting. Like in part five, that happens a lot. There's a lot of like, you know, a lot of Jesus symbolism, like every once in a while. And it's actually done very subtly. Like some of it you actually have to dig for. So it actually becomes interesting, but this one is just like, okay, I'm done. No, this yeah. isn't this isn't fun anymore. Well, it is fun, but like it's not serious anymore. <laughs> Especially because like Caesar's death is one of like when it comes to the first four parts, it's one of the better written ones. I think. Like when it comes to the first four parts, because like part five just like destroys it. <laughs> but you know. I mean, Destroy, like that is what just it's, it's like fine, like the parts leading up to it, and then it's just like the rock. I'm like, stop it. I would, <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I would say there are some deaths that are more. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying it's the best one, I'm just saying it's one of the better ones. Like, yeah, in, for, in, the, for in sure. the top five. Yeah, maybe it's at five. I don't know. I would say. <clears throat> Part four, probably, even though there's not that many, I would say part four has the most, uh, oh, yeah, has the best ones. But when, when it comes to the deaths, though, part five was the only one that got me. I was like, oh, it's yeah, so for sure. No, we're definitely in agreement about like one of them. Um, anyway. We're not going to um, talk about part five. We're not going to spoil anything. Yeah. You spoiled enough we're not gonna, for me. We're not going to spoil anything about your namesake. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wait. Can I just talk about fucking Giorno Giovanni? I'm, I hate him. Giovanna. I hate him. I don't. You haven't Giovanna? Seen oh, well, fuck him. I hate him. I hate him already. <laughs> He's because of my name. I hate it. So You know, when I was at high school, I had a friend of mine who already told me about the name. So I knew about it. But then I get to Emerson, and everyone would <laughs> shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> like, you, Emily, and yeah. South were, oh my god, awful. Like, the first thing South ever said to me, first met it, I met them, and they were like, oh, like, Giorno Giovanna from JoJo, the same name. I was like, I know. Well, I, think I, I think I remember that. <laughs> I went back, to, like, home to, like, New Jersey during, like, a weekend in October, and I was, like, telling my friend Caleb, I'm just, like, dude, everyone keeps talking about fucking Giorno Giovanna. I'm starting to get sick of it. By <laughs> December, I was, like, I'm about to punch someone. Whoever says Giorno Giovanna, they're getting a punch. Giorno yeah, fans kind of suck, not gonna lie, but, you know. So, someone did that over TikTok. On oh our Grayson's TikTok, where, like, my name, it was, like, my, our, my Netflix username was in it. My next name is a Giovanna, and someone said, is that a JoJo reference to my name? I was, like, I'm going to get Jojo? their ass beat. So another, I, I have a couple more things about Caesar over here. Um, something I didn't realize, and like for some reason I didn't realize it in the first time I watched part two, is that he's actually like such a bastard. <laughs> I mean, yeah, for sure. Like I didn't, I, I he like, because when I first watched it, I guess in comparison to Joseph, he didn't seem as much of a bastard. But like after doing like a close analysis, I'm like, this guy's a bastard. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, pigeon in the mouth scene, just that whole scene. <laughs> the pigeon in the mouth scene. I mean, I definitely got bastard vibes the first time I watched it. Yeah, but like it's, just you know, in comparison. But now it's like he's even more of a bastard almost. <laughs> that, now that we've close, <laughs> closely and analy closely analyzed him, we have concluded he is a bastard. <laughs> yes, I'm just going to make out with a bunch of random women. And also, I am friends with several Nazis because I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about that. That's, yeah. yeah that's true. <laughs> Just like Caesar, honey, you got it. <laughs> I also, he's he was definitely like, like a weird character. Oh yeah, he's, he's, once again, the best, my favorite part about part two is the fact that all the characters kind of suck. Like, they're not good people for the most part. Yeah. They're all like... The, they're all morally compromised in some way. Except Smokey. Smokey's just Except Smokey. Vibe. Smokey is the only one who has <laughs> never done anything bad in his life. Like, to be honest, Except, I forgot like, he was a character. People. Yeah, but he knows yeah, he he's disappears. on the streets. He disappears for, like, a hot minute. 
Fair. Like, I yes, forgot he was, he was in part two. It's not like he was stealing stuff from people just because he wanted to. It's like, yes, I don't have money, so I need it you're somehow. You're right, you're right. He's a little, he's like a young child. I'll say a little kid, but like, yo, a, a, a teen. He's a like 15. Teen, an adolescent. Uh, and yeah, just, so. My favorite thing in the world is how he becomes so invested in, like, the Joe Star family history and how Arena yeah. literally just adopts him off the street. Yeah. He's basically Speedwagon part one. He's Speedwagon, but less annoying. <laughs> <laughs> they're both he very- narrate everything. Yes, yeah, they're both very wholesome. <laughs> yeah, I feel like in uh, part one, Speedwagon was there to narrate everything, but in part two, like, JoJo's narrating everything. He was narrating his own things. I'll He's admit narrating. that that got on my nerves a, a, oh, yes. a couple of times where I was just like, get on with it. Like Yo, in the I've middle seen... of the battle. Like, dude, shut up. That's just like a thing with like old manga and anime. Is that like I, I've seen I've watched a bunch of it recently, and it's like this JoJo is not nearly the worst example of people narrating everything that's going on. I've seen shows that have like done it far more annoyingly. So like it is it is like like, I, it doesn't even bother me anymore, just based on, like, how much other shows that I've seen that do the same thing, but worse. All right, fair. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's of, actually, like, compared to others, it's actually, like, fine <laughs> when it comes to It sort of that. makes sense, like, in a manga aspect where, like, you know, you can only show, like, so much of the action at any one time, so, like, sometimes you yeah. can fill in the blanks, but... Or, or if it's, like, in a show and it's, like, like a multi-part episode where, like, a fight goes on, like, you need to, like catch people up to speed, but, like, yeah. I don't know. It's it's pretty egregious in part one for me. It's, like, in part two, there's, like, some explanations that I'm good with when they're, like, going to, like, the scientific way and how this works. I'm, like, okay, that's fine. But, like, and everything else, they're, like, ah, this is exactly what he did in great detail. And I'm, like, okay, we already saw it happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> I, I, and, like, the other thing that makes it more palatable to me in part two is that, um, like, a lot of the fights have, you know, sort of unique things. Like, you have Lisa Lisa, you know, hanging above the spikes. You have the chariot battle. And, like, all of those things, like, need to be explained just so, like, the audience has, like, a clear sense of stakes. Um, yeah, but, but those things just, were, like, explained, you know, those things are, like, obvious. They need to be explained. But if it's stuff like... Cars is a pillar man, then, like, well, yeah, I know that. <laughs> We're quite aware. <laughs> okay. I don't know. What other topics do I have? <laughs> Can I mention something that, Please like, do. I thought was, I don't, I don't see, I'm, yeah, kind of problematic. Like, the last two parts, right? Lisa Lisa got stabbed, stabbed in the Ooh. chest. She should be dead. She's not dead. But, like, instead of taking her to her goddamn hospital, like, she's just kind of, like, laying there. Like, I know, like, Joe does off to save the world or whatever, but, like, someone could bring her to a hospital. Like, who's gonna do that? And I was getting really, like, annoyed. I was like, she should be dead at this point. Why is she not dead? Giovanna. Yo, did you hear, did you listen to the second to last episode that we did and hear us go off? <laughs> Giovanna. Wait, yeah? You are not, like, even at, like, 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 wait to part five and, like, <laughs> like all the... <laughs> Like, Nisa should be dead, like, 12 oh times God. over. I like, mean, like, Joseph's arms ripped off. He's bleeding now. He bled out for a while. Should be dead at this point, but you know, whatever. Yo, there was a scene in part five. I was convinced that Nisa would end. It was when, like, Prosciutto shot him three right. times through the skull, and this man was not dead. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, literally laid him on the ground, put a gun to his head, and put three holes through his skull. I, I mean, like, he didn't he, even, like, the explanation of how he survives that is, like, total bullshit. Oh, like, yeah. Because my man keeps, like, he shoots things, and then, like, he always gets shot by his own bullets when they ricochet off other things, and I'm like, bro, you good? <laughs> this man has been shot. Like, I want to do, like, when we get there, I'm going to do, I'm going to count every single time. It was, like, 27 <laughs> times or something. And then it was, like, 27 count. times in all of part five, he is shot by his own bullets, and it survives. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I definitely agree, like, the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, shit, like, she should be dead, but, like, and then the fact like, that she yeah. also gets, like, holes through her feet as well, because, like, ah, that's yeah, how he ties the rope. in the feet. <laughs> but, like, yeah, no, blood loss, not, not a problem in JoJo. <laughs> yeah, I'm not but, sure if this wait, is mentioned. Giovanna, have you, have you watched that episode where we go off about Lisa Lisa? Uh, how, like, you know, like, she's, like, 
obviously probably the most powerful one, but like, you know, they don't really do much with her. They make your, I don't know, her battle is very lackluster. It's That's very funny. sad. It, la- it lasts two minutes. Like, they yeah. make her like, oh, she look at her. She's walking on water. She's so cool. She's basically training them. She's putting Jojo in her place. I'm like, yeah, she's cool. I'm not gonna lie. I like her. I respect her. But then it's like she doesn't do much. Like, she has a chance to do a cool epic battle, and it ends in like two seconds. Because Jojo has to be the hero. I'm like, I was kind of annoyed. It's fine. At least, like, if she right, lost, I, I, okay, but finish. if it was an epic bat- battle, or like, epi- it was really more longer and cooler, then, like, I would have been into it. But, like, it was, like, two seconds over. I was like, all right, that was really disappointing. Yeah, that's pretty much what, that was one of our big dummy set criticisms. That was, like, once yeah. again, we described it as, like, probably the worst dark spot on part two, that we were just like, okay, this is, I, I'm not a fan. <laughs> yeah. I, it, I mean, I think... I already said everything I needed to say about yeah, it same. when we did that episode, but just, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> I, have, I have one last discussion point that I have written down, at least, if we would like to do that. Yeah, go for it. Let us discuss the Pillar Boys. <laughs> the boys. The, pi- the boys, the boys, the boys. boys. Mostly, I feel like we've already, like, at least on the podcast TM, we've already discussed all we needed to about, like, the pill, like most of most of the pillar men but like i have another point about cars still and it was only a point that i realized when we were talking about like yes we're gonna get guest stars and then like south was like oh no i can't i have to do something and then before they mentioned like ah yes i'm not a fan of Car- he's like the worst villain because he's like i'm immune to that Ugh. you know i can do anything but then i like the first thing i thought of when i heard that m- South, you listening? I know you are. <laughs> this is a call out post for our friend. The call out post. I love you, fam. You're fantastic. But I just needed to cover this on the part two part because there would been no other opportunity in which I could cover this. Is that I feel like Cars is actually like the perfect adversary for Joseph. Certainly not a perfect character or a perfect villain, but as an adversary for Joseph, he's like th- there could be no better uh, like main opponent for him specifically. Because he's literally everything that Joseph hates, and because he, he's just so egotistical, and Joseph states several times, he's like, I hate egotistical bastards like him. And they also mirror each other in a weird way, because they're both, like, on each of their respective, like, sides, like, we have the good guys and we have the pillar men, on each of their respective sides, they all sort of some of them have mirrors towards each other. Not really, I can't really think of one for ACDC or Santana, but definitely, you know, Wamu and Caesar sort of mirror each other a tiny mm-hmm. bit when it comes to their, like, honor TM. Maybe I must capture um, the Avatar to restore my honor. <laughs> but I'm just uh, tossing this out there, but maybe you could argue that Santana and Von Sturheim are the mirrors because that's fair. they're both interested in, like, like, Santana is, like, has a natural curiosity, and, like, so does Von Stroheim. Like, obviously, it manifests in very different ways, but, you know. Yeah, they like all that's sort a of... comparison. I, I guess that's kind of right. ACDC maybe... Um, I don't know about ACDC. Maybe, ACDC's like, m- <laughs> more in, like, the, you know more literal meaning of mirror where they're opposites where ACDC is like a sadist and like you know may- maybe like Smokey is like obviously a person with a lot of compassion I don't know I don't feel very confident about that ACDC one but yeah it's still there but like now that you mention it it's like they mirror each other and yet they're very different from each other because you got like Santana and Stroheim which are both they both are very curious and both be like yes I like to discover things about science, and yet they both express this in much different ways, one of them being a lot more loud and obnoxious than the other. <laughs> and, you got, and you got, like, Wamu and Caesar, and, like, they both have a very strong sense of honor, except Caesar's a lot more emotional than Wamu is. Wamu's like, I'm gonna get right down to business to defeat the Huns over here. <laughs> and with Cars and Joseph, it's like, yes, they're both incredible they're both like trickster gods they're both very smart and very underhanded and they pull fast ones in order to get what they want and yet also they both you know joseph absolutely hates cars because he's just like a bastard you know (laughs) i think also um something that you could say is like 
we talked about on, on last episode how like cars is like physically speaking he has like no weakness he's essentially a god but um like mentally he is like you know himself and, and like that's what joseph always uses to beat his enemies is like their mental weaknesses and like so that sort of makes him like the perfect foe for joseph it's like the ultimate physical battle but at the same time also like a battle of wits and you know uh thinking and you know joseph wins that battle because we've seen him do it so many times before it's like he's he's definitely like that is the one thing that like cars it, after like doing a close analysis i realized that he's like kind of underrated as a villain like he's certainly not close to the best like there's he's definitely not my favorite jojo villain by a long shot not even close, but at the same time, he's not terrible either because of this reason, because it's such, his, even him getting, like, complete immunity to just about everything is also a perfect setup for a fight against Joseph because of his, like, him consistently, like, just surprising his enemies with, like, ah, yes, there's no way that you can ever defeat me because of this reason, then he's, like, psych- I'm here, I'm defeating you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he just does it anyways. Like, he does everything that, because, you know, he's such, you know, he likes to put on the act of being a dumbass. Like, he just is very good at surprising people and has also been just generally very lucky on a few occasions. So it's just like, that. that is like the perfect, it is, in my opinion, probably one of the most perfect villain hero dualities in jojo i'm not sure if it is the best one but it's definitely up there i would say the best one is part four um see i i, I have not had time to critically analyze part four yet <laughs> for i mean yeah fair and like you know I'll, I'll make my case for that once we get to it but um yeah Era is I, my it's probably my favorite villain though from what is animated so far yeah um, I, I, I definitely think, though, the duality element is, like, a really big part, um, although it, it, I almost, just to, like, opine for a second, um, I, I consider the Pillar Men collectively to be the villains of Part 2, like, I don't consider Cars to be the main villain of Part 2. He's, um, like, the leader. The big, he's, he's the big baddie that rules over the other big baddies. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, but like, you know, I feel like Cars, like, comparatively speaking, like, doesn't have a lot of screen time. I mean, I guess you could make an argument that Dio in part three doesn't have a lot of screen time, but, you know, no, whatever. Wamu, Wamu's like a villain, but like, I like him. He's, he's such a likable. <laughs> he's so yeah. likable. Like, I don't well, even... Regardless, I mean, that's sort of, you know. Like, he's not a villain. I wouldn't describe him as villainous at all. Like, he's on the opposing side, but he's not villainous. He's not, like, a bad person, TM. Like, yeah. He's done bad things, but, like, deep down we've been shown that he's he, he's kind of soft. Yeah, he's got, like, more... He's got the most humanity to him out of all of the pillar men. But, um, yeah, I mean... He's like, know, yes, I will not kill children. <laughs> yeah, and he's, he's honorable and all that. But, um, yeah, I just think, like... Like, that's just how I, like, view it, and viewing it that way, I think, is, like, um, I think the Pillar Men are actually, like, one of the better JoJo villains. I like them more than Dio. Oh, yes. Versions. Um, Dio's kind of, I like, I like part one Dio, not gonna lie, <laughs> but, like, part three Dio. Part three Dio's funny. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's all I'm gonna say. Part three Dio is fun. He's not good, uh, but he's fun. Um... <laughs> And, uh, sorry, just the last thing I'll say real quick is just, like, I think the reason for that is, like, like, they all have, like, personality traits. Like, every, every Pillar Man has one personality trait, and, like, if they were all <laughs> part of the same person, then, like, it would be very interesting and complex. I feel but, like, like they're just like spread out over four characters. <laughs> I feel like a lot of their personality traits also just cannot reside inside of one person, because they, they, they collide with each other a lot. Like, if Certainly Wamu like, would be the odd man out. Yeah, because it's like Wamu's like, Wamu's definitely not sadistic like ACDC. ACDC's definitely not honorable like Wamu, and neither is Cars. 
and you know cars and acdc are kind of similar and they're both like very cursed individuals and then you got santana who's like i don't even know just vibing i guess <laughs> i guess like uh, santana doesn't have much of a personality <laughs> He's just like, ah, yes, I'm, I'm curious about things sometimes, and I don't like to talk very much. That is about it. You know, I just want to give Dio some, part one Dio, some credit that I did find him a more complex villain than the Pillarman. I feel like the Pillarman kind of just appeared. And we're like, we're just going to take over the world. LOL, mm -hmm. bye. But like, Dio, it's like this whole, it's like stems from this whole like rivalry with like Jonathan and like, you know, his like, his father had being a, like, having abusive father and whatnot. Like, it just sounded like, you know, there's a lot more to do and what kind of, like, dro like dro drove him to do, what he to do what he did. Like, not justifying it, but just, like, you, you see, like, which, like, dominoes fell, which led to him becoming, like, mega vampire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely easy to tell that, like, the this type of person that Dio is, and then, like, combined with the type of upbringing he had, was just, like, this person is going to, like have that vibe it's like i just it's it's i feel like it's a thing that definitely happens where someone who has a bad life and is like a in like combined with being a certain type of person because not everyone that has a bad life come becomes a terrible person but like when you're a certain type of person and you're in that certain circumstance it's like yeah you're probably gonna become like a very power hungry greedy bastard who's gonna try to kill people and steal their wealth <laughs> yeah Always a good time. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, part one Dio, I just still feel like is, I mean, I, like, I, I definitely, like, I think Wamu by himself is a more complex villain than part one Dio. Oh, yeah, just definitely. Cause, Wamu's great. We've like, discussed this. <laughs> like, part one Dio is, like, you know, I can empathize with him, you know, like, abusive father, uh, or rather sympathize with him, um, you know, like, having a, an abusive father and, like, you know, just, like, basically, like, being shit on for, like, the first 10 years of his life, but, I mean, I don't know, I, I just feel like his motivations to take over the world are just, like, very, like, paper thin, like, I, like, if it was, like, more specifically about like he him wanting power and wealth and stuff like that like if, if there was like more evidence of that within the show then maybe i would feel differently but just as it is right now i still feel like he is um the weakest jojo villain i feel like there's a big difference between part three Dio and part one Dio, and that's Definitely. why i remember i made a tier list and my tier list based on all the ones that have been animated so far because I do not have access to the manga because I don't have money. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have access to it and have money, but I don't. So, <laughs> so we, my, my tier list was in, in first place, we had Kira. In second place, we had Diavolo. In, um, okay. <laughs> in tied in third place, I had part one Dio and the Pillar Men. I might, like, I might put him him like maybe like a smidge below the pillar men but like generally speaking like i'm like they're like kind of like the same level of villain they're you know they're they're basically they're they're interesting in their respective parts but they're mot both of them have like lacking motivations i guess they're like not explained incredibly well and then you got part three Dio in last place <laughs> because it's just <laughs> like okay <laughs> When I think of part three Dio, I know nothing about part three Dio. Oh, but you're gonna, it's besides gonna be an fun. image you showed me once. But I, I think it was like from It's Always Sunny of Dennis Reynolds just going, the golden god! And that's the, <laughs> like what I think of. Just based off an image I've seen. Yo, you. I think you only saw that image because of the great debate. <laughs> <laughs> the great debate. The great debate that has appeared several the, the times in the main group chat when it debate. really shouldn't have. The bit that broke Thomas's sanity. <laughs> I like to call it. We we'll probably Thomas. do that. We'll probably rehash that. We're going to have. Point we're going to have the debate. Okay, we're going to have a formal debate. Oh Everyone gets two minutes to speak their points, and, like, and no longer, no less. <laughs> <laughs> I could contribute more too, because when we made it, I've only seen like a. I think I've only seen part one when we made it, so now I can contribute more. Yes. But to make a part 
three and four. Wait, no, we have to we yes. have to get to part six before we could actually have the debate because Dio's in part six too. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I <laughs> well, te Dio. technically, Dio is also in part seven, but he's like not Dio. Alternate universe Dio. Alternate universe Dio, and he's like not as bad. Yeah, mm. he's got dinosaur powers. <laughs> um, really? Yeah. Uh, did I, I ever I support it? Did I ever show you that meme where it was like all the different Dios? Like part one, Dio was like that cat with the knife pointed at it, making that face, and then part three, Dio was like Pepe the Frog reing. And then, like, part six, Dio was, like, a picture of Socrates thinking. And then, like, part seven was, like, a, a, someone in an inflatable dinosaur costume holding an American flag riding a horse. Why have I not seen this? I love I it. I don't know, but, um, like, it's, it's a perfect summary of him and all of the parts. Anyway, uh, do we have any, uh, anything else to talk about? Breakdown? Do we? I don't, if any of y'all do. Giovanna? I'm just looking at my notes. I just see something I wrote where I put, imagine you're dying on the floor and the last thing you see is a man in a loincloth standing over you. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's such a sad way to go. <laughs> uh, All right. Um, I kind of put that in there. I was just like, I want to talk about that. Just that, is, that is how we're concluding this episode. <laughs> I, I think that's probably the most fitting way we could close out a part two discussion. Yep. Um, so with all that said, if you want to um, listen to all the silly, semi-serious stuff uh, that I post about, talk about in my free time, follow me on Twitter at Thomas M. Brickman. Uh, I also do another podcast with my buddy Kevin, uh, where we talk about video game news and uh, just what we've been playing and all that stuff. We're on a hiatus right now, but um, probably very, very close to having a new project up uh, on that channel. So uh, you're going to want to keep an eye out for that. It's Post Game Content on YouTube and at Post Game C-O-N on Twitter uh, for all the news updates and whatnot. And uh, Emily, where can people find you on Twitter? I exist on Twitter at Emily Vinkles. I post fun things about shows that I watch. <laughs> that, is a, that is the extent of what I do for the most part. And uh, Giovanna, uh, where, where can people find you on social media? You find me on Twitter at Gio Morali. I don't really tweet too much, but I do a lot of like retweeting, talk like, you know, comic books and whatnot, or, like media, anything I'm interested in, because I'm a giant nerd. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you want to keep up with all the news relating to this show and uh, all the awesome memes that Emily finds slash makes, you can follow uh, the show's uh, account at I Want to Fight AR1 on Twitter and I Want to Fight RRQ on Instagram. And we'll see you guys next time when we start breaking down Stardust Crusaders. <laughs>